Round of applause, Stephen. And the uh, floor is yours, brother. Awesome. It's really exciting being here with you guys. Running has been a big part of my life for the last 10 years. And being here, it brings back a lot of memories of when I started out in cross country. So I can still remember signing up in eighth grade and I had no idea what I was getting myself into. In fact, I knew so little about distance running, I didn't realize it was a bad idea to drink milk before a race. So here I am, I'm chugging down milk right before I'm about to run two miles, and in my mind, I thought I would be okay. I mean, I figured it's milk, it's kind of like water, it's a liquid, it won't bother me. Well, the gun goes off, I take off with my friends, and about a half mile into the race, I'm thinking to myself, you know, my stomach isn't feeling too good. I, I hope that goes away, because if this gets worse, I'm gonna have a problem. A mile into the race, I'm clutching my chest. I feel like I'm about to throw up. I'm walking at this point. Well, actually more like crawling than walking. People are passing me left and right. I walk the rest of the race. I cross the line and I look back, you know, seeing who's gonna finish behind me. And after a few minutes, I realize, oh shoot. I just finished dead last in my first cross country race. I was incredibly embarrassed and I was asking myself, what the heck did I get myself into? Do I really want to keep doing this? This sport is a lot crazier than I thought it was. But I want to share that with you guys because we all have moments in our life where we embarrass ourselves. We all have moments in our life where we feel like we get in over our head. We have moments where we face a challenge and we can choose to run away from it or we can choose to face it head on. My journey as a runner, it was filled with a lot of challenges. It was filled with a lot of setbacks. It was filled with a lot of moments like that first race where I wanted to give up. And so to any of you guys who have maybe come from having a difficult season, maybe are, have struggled with injuries, past or present, even if it's something outside of running, just something going on in your life, I want to encourage you that you can overcome it and get through it. And you can have an awesome season and you can have an awesome life, regardless of what you're dealing with. I'm gonna share with you what my journey was as a runner and how I was able to overcome the obstacles in my life. And I hope you can take that back and relate it to your life. So that race really summarizes what my life was like. I was not a talented athlete. I was not a gifted student. I was basically this awkward, scrawny Lebanese kid that all my friends would pick on and give a hard time. I really didn't think I was going to amount to very much. And everyone around me thought that the same thing too. My teachers didn't really believe in me. My coaches would count me out. Um, I was made fun of, of by my classmates and I don't blame them. It seems like everything that I tried, I failed at. After that first cross country race, I end up getting injured and I sit out the entire season. Basketball comes around, I bust my knee out in practice, I sit on the bench the entire season. Track comes around, and at this point, I'm thinking to myself, I just wanna do something great, like make it to state, so I can put all this behind me. So I switched over to sprinting, I gave that a try, and at sectionals in the state of Illinois, the top two people in each event go. And I finished third in two events that day. So I barely made I barely missed making it to state twice. I was incredibly frustrated. And now I'm going off to high school and I'm wondering, what the heck? I'm just a failure. I can't do this. But then I started thinking to myself that high school was an opportunity. It was a fresh start, a new team, a new opportunity to set a new course. I had a choice in front of me. I could either keep the same line of thought that I'd had up to this point. I'm a failure. I'm not good enough. I'm a mistake. I can't do this or I could decide, you know what, I'm gonna do something great with the next four years of my life. And I don't care if it's a challenge, I don't care if I have to go through one setback after another, I'm going to get through it. And that's the same choice that you guys have. It doesn't matter it, what people have said about you, it doesn't matter if there's someone trying to tear you down on your team, it doesn't matter what setbacks or failures you've had in your life, what does matter is how you view yourself. Because that choice, more than any other choice, is gonna impact your season. If you believe that you're gonna fail, guess what, you're gonna fail. If you believe that you're gonna do something great this season, the success is gonna come from that. You know, think of this as an example. If you're in a race, you're up against a rival from another school, you go into that race thinking, you know, this guy, he's in really good shape, he's been running good times, I've been feeling kind of worn out, I, I haven't been running the best lately, I, I can't hang with him. What are the chances you're gonna beat him? Not very good, right? As soon as the gun goes off, you're gonna let him go and you're not even gonna try and fight for the win. But if you go into that race with the attitude, you know what, he's tough, but I'm tougher. What are your chances of winning that race? They're a lot better, aren't they? Because when the gun goes off, you're gonna stick with them, you're gonna make them fight all the way to the finish, and if they aren't as tough as you, you're gonna come out with the win. 
how you, what you, how you view yourself, that's going to set your path for this season. And even outside of being an athlete, that's going to set your path from life. If you believe you are a champion, you will do great things. If you don't believe in yourself, your actions are going to follow through on that. So my challenge to you is when you wake up and you look at yourself in the mirror, I want you to see a champion. And maybe you're like me. Maybe you're starting out as a runner and you've had a lot of setbacks. Maybe you've had injuries. Maybe you feel like you're the slowest person on your team. And it's hard to see that things can get better. I get it. I was there once. But you should still believe in yourself. And the reason why I believe in that is when I look around this room, I see a bunch of unique individuals, a bunch of individuals who have unique gifts and talents. And quite frankly, there has never been anyone like you. There never will be anyone like you again. You are unique. You have gifts and talents that are specific to you. And because of that, I believe that you are meant to do something with your life that no one else can do. No one living before and no one living after. No one living now can do. Only you. I mean, if you were to look at your DNA, the stuff that makes up who you are, and you were to look at how complex it was, it would fill a book that's 23,000 pages long. What are the chances that someone else has the same exact copy as you? It's so high, it's nearly impossible. So I don't care what people say about you. I don't care how many times you've fallen flat on your face, whether it's been as an athlete, whether it's in life. There is never going to be anyone like you. There has never been anyone like you. And because of that, you are living a journey that is your journey, and you're going to do something awesome with it. Believe in that. But we know that belief isn't enough. We have to follow through on it with our actions. That means putting in the work. And when things are going great, we're running good times, and the, the runs are coming easy to us, it's easy to put in the miles. It's easy to put in the work when things are going well. The challenge is when we're having a tough season, when we're feeling beat up or worn out, or there's stuff going on in our personal life, or we're facing an injury. It's in those moments that the work counts the most. Because if you look at any Olympic athlete, any champion out there, the reason they're a champion is they keep fighting when things get tough where everyone else just gives up and throws in the towel. A great example of this is if you look at the marathoner Meb Kiflegsky. Meb has probably been one of the most successful marathoners of the last 20 years in US running. He's had a lot of moments where he's been on top of the world, but he's had just as many moments where he's been stuck in the valley. It's dark, it's tough, and it feels like there's no way out. I'll give you a few examples. Back in 2004, at the Athens Olympics, in only his fourth marathon, Meb walks away with the silver medal at the, at the Olympics. He's on top of the world. He's one of the best athletes out there. Fast forward four years to the 2008 trials. Meb breaks his hip in the middle of the race, barely finishes, doesn't make the team. As if that isn't worse enough, his training partner, Ryan Shea, has a heart attack and dies during that race. In 24 hours, he went from being on top of the world to being nobody and he just lost his best friend. That would have been an easy day to hang up the shoes for good. But Meb didn't give up. He chose to keep pushing forward, even though he knew he had a long recovery process ahead of him, even though everyone in the media was saying that his professional career was over and that he should just give up. And a year later, in 2009, he won the New York Marathon. He's back on top. But then at the London Olympics in 2012, Meb makes the team but he gets off to a poor start. He tries to make a comeback late in the race, ends up finishing fourth. So he's unable to get a medal again. He's the first person to come home that doesn't get a medal. And so that's another setback for him. Could have given up then as well, but he chose to, but he chose to keep pushing. In 2014, Meb wins the Boston Marathon. And keep in mind, Meb was the first American citizen in over 30 years to win that race. And he did it the year after the Boston bombings happened. Meb wasn't just a hero that day for the running community or for Boston. He was a hero for America. He gave people hope a year after those tragic events. That's another moment where Meb was on top. But then, if you look at his performance in the Rio Olympics, early on in the race, he fades from the leaders. He doesn't even finish in a top 30. It was raining throughout the day, and as he's coming up to the finish line, he slips and face plants right in front of the finish on international television. Don't get me wrong. Meb's had a lot of success in his career. He's a silver medalist, he's a four-time Olympian, he's won the New York Marathon, he's won the Boston Marathon. But he has had just as many failures, breaking his hip at the trials, not getting on the medal stand again at London, losing his training partner, Ryan Shea. But I hope when you look at his career, you realize most of the good things that happened 
would not have happened if he didn't push through the hard times. If Meb had given up back in 2008, he never would have won New York, he never would have won Boston, never would have made the London team or the Rio team. If Meb had given up after London, he wouldn't have won Boston. My point to you guys is that when things get tough and you're asking yourself, why am I doing this? I want to challenge you to keep going because things do get better if you persevere through it. If you quit, it's game over. And I can share that from my own experience. When I got into high school, things continued to feel like it was going on a trajectory downward, not upward. You can't see because I'm wearing jeans, but I have what's called a varum shins. So basically it makes me more vulnerable to stress fractures, shin splints. I basically had them every single season. And there were a few moments where I wanted to quit. I wanted to give up and throw in the towel. I remember my sophomore year of track. It was, it was actually before the season. It was in late January. I was training, and I could tell I had shin splints. I knew what it felt like. But in my mind, I was worried about coming into the season in shape. I wanted to be ready to go. So I decided, you know what? I'm just going to tough it out. I'm going to push through this, and everything will be OK. And if you've had injuries, you know that's usually not a good idea. About a month later, I'm in so much pain, I can't sleep at night, so I finally have to go to a doctor, get it checked out. I wasn't expecting good news, but I wasn't expecting what he told me. The doctor sits down with me and he says, Stephen, you have stress fractures in both legs. You've been running on those stress fractures for over a month, and you need to sit out the entire track season. And I kind of blew it off. I was like, come on, doc. I'll, just, I'll sit out for a week or two, and I'll come back. I'll, just, I'll tough out the rest of the season. And he cut me off, he said, Stephen, if you run any more right now, we're gonna have to put an iron rod in your leg and you won't be able to run again. Your choice is to sit out the season or not run again. That's not something you wanna hear 10 days before your first meet. There was another time when I was injured again, but I thought it would be a good idea to bring a bike to practice so I could at least do something while my teammates were out running. Problem was, I didn't have a bike myself at that time, so my dad said to me, hey, I saw this bike at a garage sale, I'll get that for you, and you know, it'll be super cheap, so if someone runs off of it at school, it won't be a big deal. And I thought, great, perfect, I've got something to do now, practice. The issue was, I didn't see the bike until I got to school. My dad dropped it off during the day, and I remember coming out, and I stopped when I saw it. Because for some reason, my dad thought it would be a good idea to, get his 16 years, to give his 16-year-old son a hot pink girl's bike that was meant for a 10-year-old, not for a 16-year-old. And so I'm, I'm standing there, I'm like, Dad, what the heck were you thinking? But then I start to panic because I realize the rest of the team is coming out right behind me. So I grab the bike, I'm sprinting over to the dumpster to try and throw it away and it's too late. They catch me red-handed with it. They start laughing, making fun of me, giving me, giving me a hard time. And so I just decide, you know what, this is bad, but I'm just gonna hop on this thing and ride out of here and you know, just do my thing. Well, I don't even get out of the parking lot. The, the front tire blows up on me, I wipe out. The whole team sees it, they're laughing harder than ever now. I'm just lying there on my back and I'm thinking, this is the worst day of my life. And it was one of those moments where I asked myself, why am I doing this? I've been after this for year, year after year after year, and I'm not getting better. I'm barely racing. The races I do run, I'm getting slower, not faster. My coaches don't believe in me. My teammates don't believe in me. I mean, they're laughing at me. I'm the laughing stock of the team. My parents are telling me to quit because they're afraid of how much I'm beating up my body. And honestly, it got to a point where my junior year of high school, I gave up on myself. Halfway through the cross country season, I decided I was gonna quit. I was gonna walk away from running. That was a big deal for me because all my friends were on the cross country team. Running was the one constructive thing I did outside of school. And basically by giving up on, on being a runner, I was admitting, you know what, I failed at this. I can't do anything great with my life. But as I walked into school with the intention of going up to coach and telling him, I quit, I'm done, I'm not coming back, I kept on having this thought in my mind. What if tomorrow is better? I brushed it away at first, and I, I kept on telling myself, look, I've been at this for four years, nothing has changed, one day is not gonna fix the mess I'm in. But I kept asking myself, but what if tomorrow gets better? And as I was kind of wrestling with that, I came to this conclusion, if I quit today, it's over and it's done for good. No going back, I failed. If I stay, I, I very well might just get injured. There's no guarantee things will change. There's no guarantee things will get better. But if I stay, there's a small chance, there's a fighting chance that things might get better. 
And so instead of quitting that day, I decide, you know what? I'll take it one week at a time, one race at a time, and I'll see what happens. The, f the first half of that season had been a mess. I was injured, I was out of shape. I went into every race thinking this stinks. I'm never gonna run faster times. I'm never gonna make varsity. I'm just not good enough. The second half of the season was very different. I went to every race thinking I'm gonna give everything I've got because this could be my last race. I wanna see how tough I am. And in 10 days, I went from a three mile PR of 1920 to 1750. And nothing changed. I was still out of shape. I was still injured. The only thing that I changed was my attitude. I went from not believing in myself to deciding, you know what? I want to find out how tough I am. And the time started to drop from that. The rest of the races that season, I started having, I, I dropped the time again, and I dropped the time again. By the time I got to the end of the season, I decided, you know what? I'm going to keep going with this. I've got a long way to go to make it to state. I've got a long way to go just to make varsity. There's no guarantee that I can make it, but you know what? I'm willing to go after it. And either way, however it ends, I'm gonna have no regrets. So I spend that next year, every day, giving everything I've got for that goal. It was, it was a challenge. I had to go through a pretty difficult recovery process because of how badly I'd beat up my legs. I was working with a chiropractor to uh, get rid of all the scar tissue I had from my previous injuries. I was working with a physical therapist to, basically I was doing a bunch of exercises to strengthen my legs so I would have better running form, so I could run faster, but also not beat myself up as bad. And it was a lot of boring stuff. It was a lot of walking around the house with a resistance band or doing these single leg deadlifts and just all these boring exercises I had to do on my own time. But I knew that if I had committed to doing them every day, something was gonna change. Something was gonna get better. And so even though I didn't wanna show up and do them day after day, I, stay, I stuck to it. And as I was getting closer to my senior year, I started to notice a difference. I could feel myself running faster with less effort. I could feel myself not getting beat up as bad after practice. I could see the recovery process starting to work, but it was only because I was willing to make the changes that I needed to on a daily basis. But as I was going into my senior year of cross country, things were looking, pretty, were looking up for me. You know, it was looking like I was going to make varsity. It looks like I would have a chance to make it to state. And that was all I wanted. I just wanted a fighting chance at it. But I was also had something else that was nagging at me. During this time, I had been so focused throughout high school on being the best athlete, being the best student, that I put a lot of stress on myself and a lot of pressure. And when I got, when I got stressed out, I turned to my teammates and I took it out on them. It got to the point where my junior year of high school, going into my senior year, I was starting to distance myself from a lot of friends because of the way I had treated them. And, it, it was, and I, I had this feeling over that summer, going into senior year of, you know, it'd be great if I made it to state, but if I lose my friends in the process because of how stressed out I am, is it really worth it? And as I was kind of wrestling with this, I received a text from someone who ran for a rival school. I didn't know her too well, but she said she was getting a bunch of runners together for an event, said it would be great if I could make it out there. And I started thinking to myself, here's someone I barely knew who reached out to me, went out of their way to reach out to me. And I started thinking, when was the last time I did that for one of my teammates? When was the last time I did that for one of my friends? And I honestly couldn't think of the last time I had done that. And I'm sharing this because while a big point of my talk is I want you to overcome the adversity in your life so you can do great things as a runner, I think I would be failing you if I didn't emphasize how important your teammates are to, are to your season. Because when I look back on my time as a runner in grade school, high school, and college, the most valuable thing I got out of being a runner isn't the times I've run, it isn't the medals I've earned, it isn't the places I've finished in, it's the friends I've made on my team. And every time that I put a race before my friends, I always ended up regretting it, but every time I put my friends before a race, I always walked away feeling better about myself. So I decided to change my attitude. Up to this point, I've been pretty selfish. Selfish. I only cared about myself. I decided to be selfless from this point. And that's the challenge I want to give to you guys. Because you can live your life one of two ways. You can live it putting yourself first, only caring about yourself, not caring about your teammates, maybe putting them down to feel good about yourself. But if you go that route, people will forget about you. I saw that happen on my team. My sophomore year of high school, the girls cross country team won the state meet. They were the best in the state, the best my high school ever had, but they didn't go out of the way, their way to respect their teammates. 
Honestly, they just stay in their group and they really only talk to someone else when they were irritated and wanted someone to vent, to vent on. And two years later, after they had graduated, they came back to visit during a track season. And I remember one of the freshmen was asking, hey, who are, who are they? And one of, the, one of the guys who'd been on the team the same time I was, he was, yeah, well, that's, that's, um, shoot, I don't remember what her name was. They were the best in the state, but because they didn't care about their teammates, their teammates didn't care about them to the point where they didn't care that they were state champions. They didn't even remember their names once they were gone. If you put yourself first, that's what happens. But if you choose to put your teammates first, they will never forget about you. And I can share it from my experience my senior year. And it would be doing simple things like when I finished a run, I would go back out and run with whoever the last guy was. I did that because my freshman, sophomore year, that was always me. I know what that felt like, I know how frustrating it could feel, and I wanted everyone to feel like they were a part of the team. If I heard another teammate gossiping about someone else, I would shut it down. Because for me, I wanted the team to feel like a place where everyone felt welcome, where everyone felt like a family. Honestly, it was as simple as going up to someone and asking them, hey, how's your day going? Or if someone was having a hard day, what can I do for you? I've been out of high school for five years, and I still have teammates who come up to me and thank me for doing that. And it's as simple as just going up to someone and asking them how their day was. So what I want to challenge you guys as you're going into this season, watch out for your teammates, put them first, and ask yourself, what is something I can do today to make someone else's day better? And if you do that, you're going to carry those friendships with you long after you move away from your high school, move away from maybe St. Louis, you're going to carry that long after your season's done. So I come into my senior year of high school. My first goal was to put my teammates first, but the second goal was to make it to state. It was uh, a lot rougher making varsity than I expected. We had a pretty deep team that year. I didn't make varsity until a week before conference, so I almost didn't make it until it was too late. But I finally get the chance to run at sectionals. I'm on the line there. I've been waiting four years for this moment. I've got one shot to make my dream come true, one chance to go after this. Gun goes off, five seconds into the race, I get tripped by another runner, I face plant, and by the time I look up, I'm 50 meters behind everyone else, and my worst nightmare has just become a reality. And all the old fears, all the old doubts, they came back. Steven, just stay down. You aren't good enough. Who are you kidding? You don't belong here. This is where you belong, right here in the dirt. And I believed that for a moment. But there was a second thought going through my head. When my face hit the dirt, I reflected back to my junior year when I wanted to quit. I was down and out, but I got back up and kept fighting. I thought back to when I was riding that stupid hot pink bike and I wanted to quit but I got back up and I kept fighting. I fought back to my sophomore year of track when I was out the whole season and I wanted to quit, but I got back up and kept fighting. I fought all the way back to that first race when I finished dead last. And I realized something. There have been a lot of moments in my journey as a runner where I had been knocked down. But the reason I was at sectionals, the reason I had a chance to make it to state was every time I got knocked down, I got back up and I kept fighting. And I, and I thought to myself, you know what? If doing that has gotten me this far, I bet getting back up one more time can get me to state. So I get back up, I get back in the fight, and it didn't look good. I thought it was over. I had a lot of ground to make up. So I told myself, Stephen, break it down, one person at a time. So I get in front of one guy, and I say, OK, let's get the next group. And then I pass fa- five guys. OK, let's get the next group. All right, I pass 10 people. 10 turns into 20, 20 into 50, 50 into 80, 80 turns into over 130 runners I passed during that race. And I was the slowest guy in the varsity squad. I was the last person on my team that anyone would expect to be doing something like this. But the only reason I was able to do that was for the last four years, every time I got knocked down, I got back up. So when I was at this moment at sectionals and everything was on the line, that was all I knew how to do was get back in the fight. I remember coming down the final 100 meters, and I knew we had it. Everyone had run a rock star race that day. I was in so much pain, but I couldn't stop smiling. 
we made it to state, but even more importantly, I be, for the first time in a very long time, I believed in myself again. You know, when I reflect back on my journey as a runner, there have been a lot of difficult moments. And even from that point, there are a lot of difficult moments after that. Yeah, I made it to stay in track, but you know what happened 200 meters into running the anchor leg of the 4x8? I sprained my ankle on the guardrail and run the slowest time of the season. But then, I, but then my freshman year of college, I run my first marathon. And then I get a stress fracture my sophomore year of college, and it's another setback. And it's all this back and forth of there are times where you get knocked down as a runner, but you have to persevere through them to get back on top. You know, so, so my, I hope what my story does for you guys is wherever you are at, whatever you've been through, whatever you might face this season, I hope it's encouraging to you. If a, if a scrawny little Lebanese kid like me can go from dead last to making it to state, I know anyone in this room can do that. I know if you guys are willing to face the challenges, whatever they may be, you can get through it. And it all comes down to believing in yourself, putting in the work when things get tough, putting your teammates first, and getting back up every time that you fall. I'm gonna end with a quick story for you guys. So I've been out to Colorado a few times in my life, and there's this phenomenon that goes, in, goes on in nature that I think is a really good lesson for us in how to handle adversity. So in Colorado, you've got the Rocky Mountains to the west, you've got the Kansas Plains to the east. It's one of the few places in the world where cows and buffaloes live in the same place together and they react very differently to storms. When a storm comes over the Rockies, cows run away from the storm. The cows aren't very fast though, so they end up getting stuck in the storm. Cows keep trying to run away, so they end up being stuck in the storm, prolonging the pain and discomfort that they feel. Buffaloes, when they see a storm coming over the Rockies, they run straight through it. And they get wet along the way but they get through it a heck of a lot faster than the cows do. That's the same choice we have. We're going to have storms in our life. It can take, take the form of an injury. It can take the form of a bad race. It can take the form of something going on in your personal life, whether it's family or, or otherwise. But whatever that storm is for you, we have the choice of running away from it, and it's just gonna stay there and keep coming after us until it finally overtakes us, or we can face the storm head on and overcome it. My challenge to you guys is whatever storms you face this season, whatever storms you face in your life, run straight through it and you will overcome it and come out on the other side. Thank you.